Our next uh, speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Carl Chip Levy, a uh, great colleague from the Oshner uh, Medical Clinic uh, in, in Dallas. Been working intensively with him for the last few years, and he, he's a great friend and colleague. So, Chip, please tell us about exercise as medicine. Thank you very much, Steve, and it's a great pleasure to be here. And I'm going to be discussing the importance of physical activity, exercise, uh, and fitness in obesity and diabetes. And basically, this is the, uh, the, comes from the article that we just published in online in the September issue of U.S. Endocrinology. Now, to start off with what causes obesity in the first place, there's really been a lot of publicity that what's causing diabetes is the sugary uh, beverages, sugar in the diet, the fast foods, blame it on Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, uh, and Taco Bell. But really, this tremendous evidence that the cause of obesity has been the marked decline in physical activity that has occurred during the last five decades. We just published this paper in PLOS One, and many of you probably saw it because it got a lot of publicity in the media. And it wasn't all good publicity. I'll give you an example. One of the uh, articles was, had a picture of me in the newspaper, and next to it it said, women are getting fat because not doing enough housework. You can imagine how well this went over on the home front. It was on three times one night on Fox News. It was just on the Jay Leno uh, monologue. So it's gotten a lot of publicity. But we looked at, over five decades, uh, household management physical activity and basically showed that there's dramatic declines over time in household management physical activity in women in the tone of about 1,800 calories per week. About 100 calories usually counts for a, mile, for, for a mile. That's about 18 miles of walking or jogging, which has declined over the last five decades in average household management physical activity in women. And likewise, one of my colleagues, Tim Church, who Steve Blair and I both have published a number of papers with, had this paper two years ago looking at occupational physical activity and basically also showed very dramatic declines during the last five decades in both women. This one had both women and men, but very uh, dramatic declines in, in occupational physical activity. And when they, when they accounted for this, it almost totally explained the marked increase in the prevalence of obesity that has likewise occurred during these past five decades. Now, that's not to say that in the setting of markedly reducing physical activity that we need to cut the calories and cut the sugars and cut all foods that have excess calories to make up for this marked decline in physical activity. But the cause, the fundamental cause of obesity is the marked decline in physical activity. Now, how much is obesity contributing to cardiovascular uh, risk, how much, of it, how much is it contributing to mortality? And this is a, a subject of considerable debate. This is a pretty uh, high-profile paper that got published online in August, and actually just is in the news today as well, uh, that suggests that 20% of mortality can be accounted for by obesity. But this other, even more high-profile paper was published by Catherine Flegel from the CDC in January in JAMA, it's a huge meta-analysis of 97 studies, 2.9 million individuals, accounting for 270,000 deaths. And they showed in this paper that relative to normal weight, that's the BMI 18.5 to 25 grade, obesity, when you put all grades, the mild, the moderate, and the severe, were associated with higher mortality. But when you just looked at grade one obesity, which is the BMI between 30 and 35, it was actually associated with a trend for 5% lower mortality. It was almost statistically significant. And the overweight BMI, which is the BMI between 25 and 30, actually had a statistically significant 6% lower mortality in this huge study. So based on, on, on this amount of data, it's certainly suggesting that the overweight and the, the, the mild, uh, mildly increased BMI is not contributing 
to a tremendous excess of mortality. And this just looks at mortality. It doesn't account for other chronic diseases that can be affected and quality of life by obesity. But just from the standpoint of mortality, uh, maybe times are changing a bit. And none of these studies accounted for fitness. And we just did this paper in circulation, our leading cardiology research journal, uh, chaired by the American Heart Association, trying to increase uh, the awareness of how important fitness is as a cardiovascular risk factor. Clearly, studies show at high levels of fitness, mortality is much lower. And if you reduce your fitness, you get gradual uh, increases in mortality rate. And almost all studies uh, show this. But fitness can also affect even diabetes. This is a large study of 8,600 people over a decade ago, published by Steve Blash group from the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study, that showed that people in the low fitness group, and they defined low fitness on a treadmill test as the bottom 20 percentile based on age and gender. And, and measuring fitness based on the, uh, the speed and incline of the treadmill. Those who fell in the bottom 20 percentile in the low, moderate is the uh, middle 40 and high is the upper 40. If you see if you increase the level of fitness, there's a marked decline in the prevalence of diabetes. And across the whole spectrum of fitness, you go from the low fit to the, to the, to the middle and to the, the very high fit, you see progressive declines in the development of diabetes. And you see the biggest improvement if you take the person from the low level of fitness to just a little bit higher level of fitness. Basically, moving the person who's the couch potato into the person who's doing more regular physical activity, doing the, the f regular physical activity guidelines, trying to get 150 minutes or so a week of moderate level physical activity. And what does the, uh, obesity do to mortality and diabetes. This is a study of 2,300 men by our friend Tim Church, uh, all diabetic, followed for 16 years. Showed that men with the low 20 percentile of fitness had increased cardiovascular mortality at any BMI, whether they were normal weight, overweight, or mildly obese. They had about a three-fold increased mortality compared to the normal weight and the higher fitness level. So fitness in diabetics dramatically affected survival. And across the whole spectrum of diabetes, if you go from the lower to the more fit, you see progressive declines in mortality risk. Now certainly, in the diabetics, weight mattered. The higher weights had a worse prognosis. The low fitness mattered. The lower fitness had a worse prognosis. But when you put the two together, you see, those who were fit had a very good prognosis regardless of their weight, whereas those who are unfit had a bad prognosis, again, regardless of their weight. In two landmark early studies from his group, he showed that obese had high all-cause and cardiovascular mortality in lean, but obese who were fit were no more likely to die than lean who were fit. And many other reports show that the same thing. In fact, if you look at change in fitness and change in fatness over time, one big study from D.C. Lee that we co-authored on showed that if you, once you accounted for change in fitness, change in fatness over time no longer was a significant predictor of survival. And the biggest thing is getting people, again, from this low level of fitness just into the next level of fitness. So we'd like to get everybody into very high levels of fitness. But the biggest bang for the buck is moving the person who's unfit to just the next level of fitness. And we can, one can do that with just increasing physical activity. Now, most of what we're talking about is cardiorespiratory fitness, but muscular strength matters too. And muscular strength, particularly with, with resistance training, improves some parameters that improve glucose control. Uh, and and there have been studies certainly showing that muscular strength is a predictor of cardiovascular risk factors and cardiovascular survival. So in conclusion, exercise as medicine makes some, some pretty important points. Physical and fitness is an important component of health 
and overall health-related quality of life. Cardiorespiratory fitness may, in fact, be our strongest cardiovascular risk factor. Although in a perfect world, being lean and fit may be ideal, but in the fit versus fat debate, fitness seems to be considerably more important than fatness. And certainly exercise medicine emphasizes that greater efforts are needed to assess and improve physical activity, exercise, and fitness. The, con the, the current guidelines are that all individuals should be doing 150 minutes of moderate physical activity per week or 75 minutes of vigorous physical activity. The Institute of Medicine says all individuals should be doing about 60 minutes each day of physical activity. Well less than 30% of our society are even coming close to, uh, to meeting these goals. So we have plenty of room uh, that we can make improvements. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chip, for an excellent presentation.